can't help but notice but the car does not have that motor anymore. And he says, yes, I blew it up. So if you remember, I, I traded this SLC for two cars. And what I got in trade was I got a Gen 2 1997 Dodge Viper race car. I loved Viper since I was a little kid and I had, it was my poster car. I had one. So when I was offered in trade for this, I said, heck yeah, I want a Gen 2 race car Viper. That's awesome. It was built by Autoform, uh, which is a pretty popular uh, Viper transformation company that makes a lot of parts for Vipers. And the guy who used to own it worked for Dodge. Cool, huh? And it's got a crate motor with a thousand miles on it. I said, okay, sure, fine. Uh, so and he, and he goes, don't worry, hit a tire barrier, it's totally buffed out, no problem. So we get there and I'm trading my SLC for this uh, Viper and a 1979 uh, Porsche 911. And I look at the Viper and it is dirty inside and out. There are cracks on every fender. The uh, tire barrier where he said it had hit, um, where he said, oh, it'll buff out, had actually been painted over red to try and paint it over. In reality, it was just black marks with red paint over it. It was a giant disaster and it was horrible. And it had this you know, cage that was in there. It smelled terrible. Um, race car, it, it smelled of fuel. There was no interior, no nothing that, that went with it. But I knew it was a well-sorted race car because it had run at a bunch of races and it came with an S, its own SCCA logbook and had done quite well. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to, you know, take this to some of the local uh, autocrosses and have a great time with it. And uh, I, I get it home and I start kind of sorting it out a little bit. I end up taking out the roll cage because if I'm going to make this into a street car, I, roll cages can be kind of dangerous. So I chose to take out the, the roll cage and buy a, a, a interior pieces for it and put it back, the interior anyway, that way. Found the guy who had owned it prior to the guy I got it from. Sure enough, he's from Detroit. He uh, worked with Dodge and a bunch of other things and come to find out it's an original hot dog car. It is, um, if you remember back in the 90s, Hulk Hogan had one. It was all red with yellow stripes and yellow wheels. And this guy I called still had the wheels, the original yellow wheels, which I'm sure everybody can imagine are in super high demand. They're not. And he said, I have all the original interior pieces as well. I got the original airbags. I've got the seats. I've got door panels. I've got all the original interior that we gutted and made this into a race car. I said, that's great. What do you want? He says, a thousand bucks. I said, where do you want to meet? I met with this guy and he was actually a really cool guy. He said, look, story of the car is I bought it uh, from somebody who had gone bankrupt and needed money. So I bought it, turned it into a race car. I worked with Dodge and a number of different projects and I had designed some of their heads and I designed this motor and it made, a, in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, made a thousand horsepower, naturally aspirated road race car. I said, wow, that's impressive. I go, I can't help but notice but the car does not have that motor anymore. And he says, yes, I blew it up. Okay. And he goes, what happened was, is since I had a bunch of friends at Dodge, I chose to buy a crate motor, stick it in, and then immediately sell it and be done with it for the rest of my life. So, okay, cool. So I choose to put this thing back and I'm looking at it and the interior's in better shape. The car runs well, because it's a crate motor, no miles on it. And so I choose to put some big bare brakes on it and some forge line wheels. And I look at the exterior and I'm like, this is crap. This thing is just disgusting. So I, as my very first wrapping endeavor, choose to wrap the Viper myself. And I'm watching a bunch of tutorials on YouTube and seeing what thing people do for wraps and stuff like that because the paint was crap anyway, who cares? Like, you know, they're like, oh, well, you gotta make sure the paint doesn't come up if you wrap it. I'm like, what did I care? I don't care. So this will be fun, this will be a, a thing. And universally, I kid you not, there was a line somewhere in almost every tutorial that says, don't worry, wrapping should be very straightforward unless you're wrapping a Viper. Why would you wanna do that? And I'm going, it's like wrapping a basketball. 
If you've ever bought a basketball for somebody at Christmas and then tried to wrap it, it's, that's exactly what it's like. I don't know what the hell I was thinking because that was not the ideal first time to try and wrap or learn to wrap something because there's a skill and there's an art to it. And I don't, I think I did okay at the end um, because there's no flat surfaces on a Gen 2 Viper, none. It, It is round and I decided the first thing to wrap was the hood. And if you are uh, unfamiliar with a Gen 2 Viper hood, it is uh, the size of Nebraska and um, has, the, has the, the general shape of an oval. It took me eight hours to do this. Two huge sheets to do it. And, uh, and I still don't think it turned out super great, but uh, I did it in matte black and it was, uh, I, I nicknamed it the War Venom. I, like, I love n- nicknaming my cars with something fun and clever and somewhat humorous. And uh, this one I just called War Venom. So I wrap this Viper. I take it to my race. And this is when I got second place at that uh, event. And that really pissed me off because I did really well and the car broke. And I ended up losing on a technicality. You had to do a horsepower race, uh, an autocross time, and a stop box time. I annihilated the stop box time. Did great in the autocross. And the guy who eventually won, because I got second, beat me by six horsepower at the dyno. And that's how he won. And I was pissed. I annihilated the stop box. I mean, I have won that stop box four or five years in a row. That's my event, let me tell you. I was so mad about this. That's when I decided I'm, I'm gonna upgrade the heads. I'm gonna do all this work. I'm gonna, I sent it out uh, to some friends uh, over at TPIS in Chaska who do a lot of engine work and, uh, you know, the heads are like this big. I mean, the V10 heads, right? And I always used to, to uh, joke with people. I said, well, you know, Dodge worked with Lamborghini to design this motor, so therefore I own the Lamborghini. I mean, that's, that's the logic, right? It's the V10, of course, right? And uh, the, the intake manifold is like 800 pounds and it's, you know, the bolts are buried in there. It's just a mess to get to. And I ended up doing it. And before I even got the chance to go race it again, I sold it. I, I put it online. Some bank executive guy, whatever, uh, wired, saw it for sale, wired me the money and picked it up like a week later. And uh, he said, um, he sent me a picture on the New Jersey side uh, of the river where the towers would would have would have stood there's a monument there and I thought that was really cool I was like wow that's it's a really cool picture of my car next to the 9-11 monument on the New York New Jersey side and I said how do you get that picture he goes that's where I live I said I can't imagine what your rent must be to have a car in New Jersey on the river facing the towers like holy cow dude and he goes yeah I'm gonna take it on a rally Fine, aim my car. You know, I have very little emotional attachment to cars. Cars are tools, they're for fun, you know. I have a long list of cars I wanna own in my life and I'm just kinda working my way through it at this time. Hence the joke, I go through cars faster than I go through wives, which is fine. And he periodically sends me some pictures and he goes on this rally and he sends me a picture of, you know, a a stack of ones, which, God knows what that was for. Uh, Some radios and a picture of a gun and a bunch of other things. And I'm just, you know, like, hey, that's your scene, man. That's not my scene, but fine, whatever. And then he he sends me a picture of this. And by by the way, man, I got this Instagram model to come with me and ride shotgun. And okay, cool. Like, I, I don't care. I did care when he sent me a picture and I didn't save it. And I'm kicking myself for this because I think I was just so, I was just, I was, I was more of, kind of offended by it more than anything when he sent me a picture of him standing on the roof, not the hood, but the roof of the Viper. It's, it's a fiberglass car. The whole thing's fiberglass. Top, sides, fenders, everything. In the middle of Times Square, this thing's all stickered up from the rally he was on. I don't even want to mention it. And he's standing on it in Times Square, standing on it, we you know, like, woo, big victory sign. And it's kind of went, why did you have to do that? Like, I don't have an emotional attachment to it, but come on, man, that's a Gen 2 Viper you've got there. Come on. 
And the ending of that story is he ended up blowing up the transmission doing 160 miles an hour down the highway and emailed me and said, you know, what did you sell me? And I said, I don't know, doing 160 miles an hour, 160 mile an hour poles on the highway is, um, sounds like your fault. Last year, Sonny and I tried out Avalon King's Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating on my Porsche 993, and it came out great, and since then it's been much easier to keep clean. You can see the story about that here, but more importantly, this month we're gonna try it out on my LP640. The car's finally done being repainted, and right now AP3 is putting a clear bra on the whole car, and on top of that, we're gonna put the ceramic coating to make it look better and easier to clean. So if you'd like to try that out on your car, you can click the link in the description below.